For fans of the Detroit Lions, this last week has been a bit of a tumultuous one. However though, one thing that Lions fans must keep in mind is that things are not as bad as they appear. We're going to talk about it in today's episode, folks, so stay tuned. We used to be a team no one respected. We used to be a team no one feared. That was then. This is now. First victory of the year on the line. Goff's got it. Back, looks, throws, end zone. Yes! Caught! You know who we are. Yes! Five! End zone! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! And you know where to find us. We won't be far. We'll be on your front porch waiting for you. We are the New Era Lions. And... We are... Driven by Detroit. Hello, everyone. And welcome back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and we're diving in right now. As always, to those that are coming back to my show, I just want to say thank you all for coming back. Thank you all for your view, your support, your patronage. Thank you all for everything that you do. It absolutely means the world to me that I have such great and such loyal subscribers that keep coming back. It really means a lot to me. And to those that are tuning into my show for the very first time, I just want to say thank you all for giving my show a shot. Thank you all for absolutely you know, for trusting me, and I hope you all enjoy the content, but even more so, I hope to gain your subscription if I've earned and deserved it. And with that being said to everybody, I just hope you all are having a great day. Just want to say God bless, hope you enjoy the show, and let's dive into it. So, here's the thing, folks. When we take a look at this last week, it has been, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Let's be fair and honest here, because we have seen a lot of chatter on the social media networks when it comes to the Detroit Lions. And I would be willing to say about 75 to 80 percent of the conversation, the talk, the video footage that has been released has been primarily that of negative. Like, Lions fans right now are just in a very negative headspace. They're in a very negative mindset. And they have a lot of them reverted back to this SOL mindset of thinking because they are angry, they are lashing out, and positive fans are trying their best to do something to put a different spin on it. But let's just be fair and honest here. SOL fans just don't want to hear it. They're just lashing out and they just do not want to hear anything good, positive, anything that resembles any sort of reason or logic. However, though, again, kind of like what I've tried to do the majority of this week is like, okay, here, for everybody that wants to talk about negativity, whether it's about a singular player, whether it's about an identity, whether it's about a specific stat, it's like, okay, here, we need to come back to a base of reality. We have to come back to a, uh, to a, a standpoint, a, a viewpoint, if you will, will, of logic and reason rather than just letting emotional abstract kind of overtake our ability to reasonably think here. So again, I understand, despite the fact that the Lions have, were embarrassed against the Bears last Sunday, many fans that are in this current SOL negative mindset, they need to slow down they need to relax and they need to focus and think about what is really important at this point. Now, what is important? Okay, let's understand something here. I understand the fact that losing against the Bears, that hurt. And it didn't just hurt in the fact that, yes, we lost to a division rival. It really hurt us in a lot of ways. One, it hurt us in our ability to take over the NFC North division much sooner when we were wanting that. It hurt us in the fact of, hey, you know what? Last year we were 5-1 and one in the division. Now this year the best we can hope for is 4-2. and two. It hurt us because we thought we were a better team, and I still believe we're a better team than the Bears. The Bears just had a really good game. Again, any given Sunday, you can win or you can lose. A good team can lose against a bad team, and a bad team can win against a good team. It happens all the time. But let's consider this. Let's actually consider some of the things that we as Lions fans, the positive ones that have been trying to push this out, and the negative fans that are not wanting to acknowledge it need to get under, you know, need to kind of get with the program. First and foremost, the Lions are the leader of the NFC North. Regardless of the fact that we lost against the Bears this last Sunday, we are still the leaders of the NFC North. The closest team to us right now is the Minnesota Vikings, and they're 7-6. and six. And right now, their ability to hold on to that winning record is looking very, very um, 
how should I dare say, suspicious, because they're going into this game that they're playing on Saturday. They're not going to have their starting offensive uh, running back. They're not on, and there's not a defensive one, pardon me. They're not going to have their starting running back, and they're not going to have their starting star wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, at full strength because he's dealing with an injury. He said he was going to play, but the problem is that he's still going to be dealing with that injury, and he's not going to be 100%. And, oh, by the way, the Vikings are also starting Nick Mullins over Joshua Dobbs, so they're making a quarterback change really late in the year. So, again, not really sure what we're going to see out of the Vikings on Saturday, but I'm pretty confident it ain't going to be that good. So let's consider that first and foremost as far as where we as Lions fans really, really need to understand that, hey, that's not nearly as bad as it could be, number one. Number two, not only are the Lions the leader of the NFC North, but they're 9-4 and four and they're the current number three seed in the NFC playoff race. Again, that is something to take into consideration that, again, is truly important. Yeah, we're 9-4, and four. it sucks that we lost against the Bears, but again... I repeat, we are 9-4. and four. We already have ourselves a winning season locked up. That's number one. But also number two, we are still very much in the thick of the playoff race, and we are all but guaranteed to go to the playoffs. All we need to go to the playoffs really is win one more game. And chances are we're going to win one more game between now and the end of the season. But I'm fully expecting we're going to win more than one more game. But again, this is something that Lions fans need to get through their heads. We are at a place where a lot of teams would be extremely enviable of us. But yet here we are, most of us, complaining. We're whining, crying, and everything else under the sun because, oh, we lost against the Bears and we feel like we've been slighted. We're 9-4. and four. What the hell do we have to complain about? We have a winning season. We're most likely going to the playoffs. But yet we have teams like the Patriots and the Panthers that have already been eliminated. So that's point number two. Point number three, we have to also consider this. The Lions still have one of the best offenses in the NFL. I understand that a lot of Lions fans right now, as I've said in a previous episode about Jared Goff, I'll put that episode back up at the top, they want to get rid of Jared Goff. There's a lot of Lions fans, the SOL fans mainly, that want to get rid of Jared Goff. Or as they would say, well, we don't want to get rid of him. We just don't want him re-signed or we want to move off him next year to give the job to Hinton Hooker. Either way, you're at that point, you're, you're splitting hairs. The point of the matter is, with Jared Goff, we've gotten two straight winning seasons, we've had two straight years of top 10, top 5 offenses, and we have enviable talent, like I've said, compared to a lot of other teams in the rest of the league. I tell you this right now, all sincerity, all seriousness, if the Lions were to cut or release a good majority of our offensive players, would not surprise me if, it, if within a day they were all claimed. Would not surprise me that if they already found new homes within literally less than a day because that is how good our talent is on offense. Can't really speak too much to the defense, but there are, t there are definitely players on the defense that I also would think would fall into that category. That's my whole point. The Lions have talent. The Lions are in a situation that most teams would definitely be envious to be in. So that's point number three. And then point number four. Moving off of the team, let's take a look at the organization. Regardless of what you think about Dan Campbell and the fact that he's rambling, gambling, you know, freaking Dan Campbell, here's what I will say. Dan Campbell is still a very, very popular figure, not only in Detroit, but in the NFL at, at pretty much at large. And then you take a look at Brad Holmes. Brad Holmes has garnered a lot of respect for the draft classes that he's put together over the last three years here in Detroit. So again, if you take a look at if you take a look at Holmes and Campbell, they are still considered one of the best head coach GM duos in the entirety of the NFL. Think about that for a minute. An organization is lucky if they can get one or the other. But when you think about the Lions, we've got both. We've got a head coach that players absolutely love. They're enthusiastic to, play, uh, enthusiastic to play for. And we have a GM that knows how to scout, knows how to trust the opinions of his scouts, and has a great, great, great ability to understand and, a, and a, what's the word, evaluate talent during draft time to give us the best possibility of finding good talent throughout the draft. And we've seen that the last three years. So again, there's a lot of things to look at with this Lions team to be like, okay, relax. Things are nowhere near as bad as they seem. But again, that's just the Lions organization in general. We also have to take a look at things outside of the Lions organization. 
But we'll get to that here in a minute. Because we also have to understand this when it comes to what's going on with the Lions. There are problems with both the offense and the defense. And again, that is where some of this animosity, this negativity is coming from. Because there are people that are like, listen, we expected that this team was going to be better. We expected that this offense was going to be a consistent, just knockout freaking unit that was going to just put up points at a whim. Okay, I understand that, but let's be fair and honest here. That has happened almost 90% of the time. There have been very few times where we have not really been able to put up points or have not really been able to info, uh, you know, enforce our will on other teams. But again, despite the inconsistency that the Lions offense has had pretty much all the last couple of weeks, we've still been a pretty powerful, pretty potent offense. But let's understand something here. Despite the problems with consistency, despite the problems with turnovers that we've been having, Understand this as well. All of that is correctable. Go back to what Ben Johnson said in his interview, literally, what was it, a day or two ago. The main reason that he thinks that they're having problems is because they've gone away from their basic fundamental plays. They've gone away from their basic understanding of what their offense is. And again, you have to have a base. You have to have a strong foundation. If you start just jumping off and going all these different directions and you don't remember, hey, this is what got you here. This is the basic of your entire identity. You're going to start having some problems. So to me, if the Lions can get back to what they fundamentally do well, their basis, their basic understanding of themselves, they should be fine. It should be correctable. Now, let's take a look at the defense. Again, anybody who's tuned in my channel knows that I have been very, very harsh, very, very critical of the defense, and especially Aaron Glenn. But even I'm going to take a moment here to say that's not as bad as it seems either. Let's take a look at this and understand this for a minute. The defense, despite its problems this year, has shown spurts of the talent that we were supposed to have had and we were supposed to have seen on the field this year. There have been moments where this defense has looked really, really good. The primary games that I can think of are the first game against the Packers and the Falcons game. Those games, our defense was absolutely just dominating the opponent. And that's saying something. Now, I will say this. Again, much like the offense, but to a much more extreme degree, there needs to be more consistency with that unit in order to harness the potential that it has lying in wait, and that's pretty much just in slumber right now. Which, again, what does that tell me? It's correctable. It tells me that, okay, if we've seen the talent put something out on the field and has done well, it's correctable. All we got to do is figure out, okay, how do we get that out consistently? Now, I'm going to say this, though, just to kind of, again, keep with what I do on my channel here. While I think that's correctable, I don't think it's likely if Glenn continues to be the defensive coordinator. Again, I would have no problem if Glenn could freaking figure out how to correct what's going on, and if he could, great, he can keep his job. But the point of the matter is, he hasn't done it yet. I don't think he's going to do it now. But again, we'll see what happens. All I'm simply saying is, for both the offense and the defense having the problems they've been having the last couple of months for the off, or not the last couple of months for the offense, the last couple of months for the defense and the last couple of weeks for the offense, it's correctable. Now, let's just give a further clarification here. The point of the matter is, is that for everything that we're seeing with the Lions, the situation is not a disaster, as many people are trying to portray. It's not like the world's coming to an end. It's not like the entire basis of Lions football is completely falling apart and crumbling down. But we have to understand something here. Yes, the Lions had a bad week against the Bears. Get over it, folks. It's gonna happen. There ain't no team except the freaking Miami Dolphins of 1972 that can say they never had a bad week of football. The point of the matter is, perfection is something that is not easily achieved. It was never gonna happen with the Lions, so expecting that we were never going to have bad weeks or bad games was absolutely foolish. It was gonna happen. So, that's the Lions in general. But we also have to understand something here as well from, from the viewpoint of these fans that are really upset. Take a look at what's happened outside of the Lions organization. Why do fans really need to step back here? The Lions fans, the SOL fans that are really, really being negative. Take a look at what happened around the NFL the week that we lost against the Bears. Eight. Not one. Not two teams. Eight underdog teams won in that week that we lost against the Bears. That is the single most under amount of underdogs that has ever won in NFL history in one single week. And you want to know who won? The Bears, obviously. The Jets, the Giants, the Titans, the Broncos, the Patriots, the Bucks, the Bills. 
kind of hard to say that the Bills are an underdog, but think about this, folks. Take a look at the teams that lost in comparison to those teams that won. Okay, obviously we know the Lions lost, but also who lost? The Chiefs, the Texans, the Dolphins, the Falcons, the Chargers, the Packers, the Steelers. If you take a look at those teams, the Lions are a playoff team. The Chiefs are a playoff team. The Dolphins are a playoff team. The Steelers are most likely a playoff team. And the Packers are probably also going to be a playoff team if they can continue to play like they've been playing for the last couple of weeks prior to this game they just had against the Giants. But we'll see. But you have at least three bona fide freaking playoff teams in those freaking eight that lost. Lions, Chiefs, Dolphins. Those are three teams that are definitely going to the playoffs, and they all lost last week. I'm just going to say this right now. Do you hear the Dolphins fans or the Chiefs fans absolutely losing their crap because their team lost a game against, oh, that's right, the Chiefs lost against the Bills. They might be upset against the refs, but they're not necessarily upset with their team. Or the fact that the Dolphins lost against the Titans. Yeah, they might be upset about that. But again, they realize how good their team is and that they're going to go to the playoffs. I don't hear Dolphins fans or Chiefs fans literally blowing up the world or blowing up against each other because they had one bad freaking game against an underqualified or, you know, a, a bad opponent. But again, we have to understand something else here about Lions fans. To keep with this whole theme of Jared Goff that I've been talking about this week, because what have been the SOL fans' main area to point the finger at? Jared Goff. Okay, let's understand something here. If you're going to point the finger at Jared Goff, let's keep that same thought process and let's keep that same logic when we take a look at those teams that I just talked about that lost against those really bad teams or against those teams that we would consider lesser quality opponents compared to the teams that they won against. Think about this one, folks. If the Lions, if the Lions fans' mindset was to be applied to the same types of teams that I'm talking about here, let's take a look at the Chiefs, for example. Patrick Mahomes, since we've been talking about Jared Goff over the last four weeks, think about this one. Jared Goff is 2-2 two two in the last four weeks, right? Want well, to know what Patrick Mahomes is in the last four weeks? He's 1-3. Oh, yeah, let's take a look at his stats in the last four weeks compared to what he normally does. He's completed 97, attempt, 97 throws to 153 attempts for a 63.4 completion percentage rate, 956 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions for an 85.9 passer rating. I'm just going to say this right now. You want to know what's funny about those stats? They are very, 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 very comparable to what Jared Goff has done the last four weeks. So if Jared Goff is the reason why the Lions have been losing, then Patrick Mahomes is the reason why the Chiefs have been losing. Just saying. Oh, let's move on to the next one here. Let's take a look at Tua with the Dolphins just losing against the Titans. The last game that, the, that Tua played with the Dolphins against the lowly Titans... They lost by one point, one measly point. Take a look at what Tua did in that game. 23 for 33, 69.7 completion percentage rate, 240 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but he was sacked five times. He had two fumbles, one of which was lost with a 90.5 pass rating game. So let's think about this here. According to the SOL uh, fans for Detroit that want to blame Jared Goff for everything, that would mean that Tua is the reason that the Dolphins lost against the Titans because of all of those sacks and because of that one lost fumble. But again, there's a lot of things that go on in a game that could have also contributed to the fact of why a team would lose, kind of like what I was talking about with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. There's a lot of things that have gone on those four weeks that would contribute why the Chiefs have lost, other than just the fact that Patrick Mahomes has been in a slump the last four weeks. Let's take a look at the fact that C.J. Stroud lost with the Texans against the Jets big time, 30-6. to The Jets, one of the most inconsistent teams of all this year. But take a look at his stats in that game. Oh, he was 10 of 23 for 43.5%. The rookie that has absolutely been a darling out of freaking Ohio State this year. Hard to believe that one, but still. 43.5% completion percentage rate. Less than 100 yards of throwing yards. 54.8 passer rating. No touchdowns or interceptions, but was sacked four times and fumbled the ball once. So again, because of that poor performance and the bevy of sacks, it would make sense, at least according to what SOL fans are saying, that C.J. Stroud was the reason why the, why the Texans lost against the Jets. Again, I'm trying to point out the hypocrisy, the absolute ludicrous just nature of what SOL fans have been saying the last couple of weeks. Because now I'm going to put the real, you know, icing on top of the cake here. Again, 
Let's take a look at the Chargers. Yeah, this one's really going to hurt for Chargers fans because they just got their butts handed to them on freaking Thursday night football against the Raiders here. But let's just think about this one. Prior to that game, because Justin Herbert wasn't in that game because he has been now put on IR because of like two fractured fingers. Think about this one. In the six games prior to that one, Justin Herbert was 1-5 in five in those games and had put up 108 completions to 174 attempts for 62.1 completion percentage rate, just a little over 1,100 yards, 7 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, for again, an 86.6 passer rating. Again, very similar to Jared Goff. But think about it. During that time frame of those six games that I was talking about, sacked nine times, was also fumbled one time. So again, all of those reasons that I'm talking about, the sacks, the turnovers, those are all reasons why the Chargers lost those games. Lost five of those six games was because of Justin Herbert. Right? Wrong. Again, we have to think about this here. When we start thinking about all the possible analytical evidence here, could it possibly be that those quarterbacks that took all those sacks, could it possibly be because nobody was open? Could it possibly also be that their defense at the time failed to stop the opposing teams in crunch time, like the Chargers? Could it also possibly be that there was a dumb penalty that happened or they just played a, or they just played a better opposing team at the time, like the Chiefs? That's my whole point. There are other things to consider. There are other factors to consider when you're taking a look as to why the Lions have struggled a little bit these last couple of weeks. But yet, despite the struggles, we've still won two out of the four games that we've played. But yet, SOL Lions fans want to say that the Lions have lost these games is primarily attributed to one player. Never mind the fact that the defense has been, for the most part, crap. Never mind the fact that the play calling and the in-game decisions has been crap. Never mind the fact that we've also had injuries that have taken very crucial key players out of the lineup. That's my whole point here. You can't attribute the reason why a team has lost specifically to one damn player. You can't even say that's a majority of the reason why a team has lost. It is a team sport, everybody. It is a team effort. Not one player, not one effort is going to attribute how a team wins or loses 99% of the time. That's not going to happen. So my point is this, to kind of tie this whole thing together. The issues that the Lions are having on both offense and defense, they are correctable. The thing that we've seen from this last week is that, listen, the Lions are not the only good team that can lose or can have bad games or their quarterbacks cannot have bad games and still not win. That's my whole point here. The point is the Lions are not just this lone entity that's just sitting out there like a freaking 18-year-old kid with a big old pimple on the end of his nose. It's like, listen, there were plenty of other teams that went through the exact same stupidity that we went through last week. It happens. It's part of playing in the NFL. There are going to be times where good teams lose against bad teams and everybody's just scratching their head wondering, gee, I guess it was their week because that's what happened last week. That's what happened to the Lions. It's what happened to the Chiefs. It's what happened to the Chargers. It's what happened to the Dolphins. And for some of those teams, like the Chiefs, like the Chargers, it's been happening for a lot the last couple of weeks, just like the Lions. So why are y'all complaining? We're still 9-4. and four. We're still in lead of our division. We're still going to the playoffs, most likely. And think about this one to kind of wrap this all up. If the Vikings lose on Saturday and we win, we're virtually almost guaranteed to lock up that playoff spot. Virtually guaranteed. Because at that point, we only need one other team to lose, and we're in. At that point, this week, we could wrap up and get into the playoffs. Because again, there is a playoff clinching scenario for Detroit where if they win and the Vikings or the Packers lose, we're in the playoffs. So just think about that when the next time you want to complain is. The Lions have the shot, have a chance to get into the playoffs this week. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this episode up and I just want to say thank you all for watching yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode that's coming at the end of this one. I also encourage you all to do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe. If by chance you've subscribed in the past, you've got to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and not had a chance to do so, again, please subscribe. It helps out. It helps me out. helps out my channel. 
But I also want to encourage y'all, please, to do this. Make sure you also hit that subscription button and also hit that bell notification icon at the bottom so that way you never miss any more content that I push out. Again, subscription numbers are always going up, and I'm thankful for every subscription that I get. But we want to make sure you turn on that bell notification icon as well so that way you never miss any more content that I push out as soon as I release it. I also encourage y'all to share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it wherever and anywhere you can, but also share it with anybody and everybody that you can as well. The more we share it, the more we're likely to get people in, which means we increase our base, which also means we have better conversations about football. And with that being said, I just want to again say thank you all for giving my show a shot. Thank you all for viewing my content, and hopefully I gained your subscription. But to everybody, I just want to again say God bless. I hope you all enjoyed the show, and I hope you all having a good day. And until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.